a Dear Media original podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by ButcherBox. With ButcherBox, we get premium meals that don't have to come at a premium price. And ButcherBox provides us with the best quality meat and seafood so you can whip up quality meals on your budget. I recently got my first box and I have to tell you, I'm obsessed. Chicken is my love language. So I got the poultry box. I usually make a ton of chicken thighs, but this came with chicken thighs. It also came with tenders and wings and a whole chicken. And so now I don't even have to decide what I'm making. I'm just going to kind of defrost as I go. And I think that that happens to a lot of people where we have so many recipes that we have access to and we end up not making any of them or any new things. And so I'm really excited to experiment more without the decision fatigue. There's just also so much peace of mind in knowing that it is incredibly high quality. This is 100% grass-fed beef, free-range organic chicken, and wild-caught seafood. They are humanely raised, no antibiotics or added hormones, and it's delivered right to your doorstep with free shipping always. And you can do curated and customized box plans. Get free chicken thighs for a year and $20 off your first box when you sign up today. That's three pounds of bone-in chicken thighs free in every box for a year, plus $20 off your first order when you sign up at butcherbox.com slash instinct and use the code instinct. Claim this deal at butcherbox.com slash instinct and use the code instinct today. Hi, welcome to Good Instincts. I'm Shira Barlow, but you may know me as the food therapist. Join me every Monday through Friday for bite-sized episodes designed to help you close the gap between where you are right now and where you want to go. This should feel good, like really good. And it will, I promise. Today, we have Ellen Bennett, founder of Headley & Bennett and author of Dream First Details Later. I'm so excited to have you. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me, lady. You and I have been talking about doing this for a long time, so it's exciting to see it come to life. Yes. You are someone who I feel like has a really healthy relationship with food, and your joy of food jumps off the screen for me. And the funny thing thing now that I'm seeing that I'm loving is watching you with your son, Nico, and seeing you see food through his eyes. And I was wondering if you are seeing it through a different lens. 100%. You're totally right. I've always loved food for the joy of it. And I love how you can stick different ingredients together and then create something brand new. And as fellow founders, I think we get thrill out of building something out of nothing, right? But sometimes it takes years. And the fact that you could take a chunk of meat and potatoes and carrots and in an hour and a half, it's something totally different to me is what I like love about it. It's just the creativity of it and the instantaneous like wow factor of ingredients becoming something else. And I think seeing Nico, now he's a year and a half old, but like seeing him taste the first shrimp he ever had when Mm. he was in Portugal or the first time he ate a tortilla with my abuelita, like he just puts it in his mouth and his whole face lights up in the way that an adult lights up when they're at like a fancy restaurant, but he's eating a tortilla. Mm. And it's so cool. And I do think that kids make us re-experience things all over again, but like with so much more awe and wonder. And it kind of reminds you that like life is pretty rad and we just get numb to it because things happen and heartbreak happens and whatever. Then you forget how beautiful everything is. And Nico's just making me think, it all over again. I'm like, yep, life is amazing. And every day, every tortilla is amazing. Mm. Every chunk of meat is amazing. Every lamb chop he's ever had is amazing. Like it's very special. Oh, I love that so much. And I really agree. And I love seeing the world through Oliver's eyes. It really just is something that people say, but is true. For anyone that doesn't know, Ellen is a professional kitchen alumni. I feel like you've worked in so many different professional kitchens in so many different capacities. And I feel like coming from someone who does have a chef background, is there anything that Nico's loving? What are you kind of prepping before? I know that you kind of have a process that you detail on Instagram that I love. Yeah. I think what we do with Nico is there's a lot of books and maybe people will be like, don't say that out loud. But No, I think it's good. From the get go, we've seasoned everything. We've never not salted stuff. I think if you use Himalayan salt, like pink salt and good quality ingredients, your child is not going to get hurt by that. Right. So we've always done that. And 
from day one, he never had refined sugars. We always gave him things that were the real ingredient and whole foods. And if we make a vegetable, we're going to roast it and put herbs on it and olive oil and salt and pepper. And he just, he eats like that. So he's used to that flavor and he'll hand me things if they're not seasoned enough. And he'll be like, ah, ah, ah. And I, I go, love like, that. Salt on it, which is <laughs> amazing. And my mom has kind of accustomed him. He'll walk around with like a piece of romaine lettuce, but instead of just romaine lettuce, it has fresh lemon juice and a little bit of olive oil and a little bit of salt on it. So it's not like we're feeding him like two Michelin starred meals for breakfast. We just season things properly. And if we do give him like a, a pasta, which is totally common, right? For kids. Yeah. We'll just make sure that it has protein baked in, or maybe it's got like cauliflower ground up so that there's some sort of nutrition along the way. And if we go to a restaurant, we'll, we'll feed him what we're eating. I love So that. it's just like an extension of us. It also makes your life a little bit easier. And then we make him participate in a lot of the cooking. So mm -hmm. if I'm going to make a smoothie, I'll sit him on the counter and I will have him drop the strawberries in or put in the collagen powder, whatever it is. And that makes him more excited to A, want to eat what we just made and B, like have an activity. And then I'm not as stressed out trying to like cook for him while he's being entertained, right? It's like we make it all one party and if there are parents that are like, well, I don't cook and I don't like to cook, think about it as an activity for your kid and like open a recipe book the way that you would open a kid's book and read and look at fun pictures through the cookbook with your kid. And if they like something, then like make that thing and you will have an hour of your time that you don't have to entertain them doing something else. Oh, I love that so much. And I do feel like getting the kids involved makes them yeah. more excited yeah. to eat and try different things and be... Yeah open. I'm wondering if you did any of the baby led weaning type of stuff or it was kind of a mix. We kind of did, but kind of didn't. Uh, I'm of Mexican descent and in the Latin culture, you literally, it's like <laughs> over your dead body, will that child not eat? So right. I feel like my mother and my grand, like everybody around him was just always offering him lots of food. So they'll run around the room like offering him yeah. things in the middle of the day. And he's always got something in his hand. So it was like a Latin edition of baby led weaning yeah. where yes, he's been handed a lot of food, but he also is spoon fed. And I, I actually think it's okay. It's the extremes that I find difficult. It's when parents are like, you never do this, or you always have to do that. That is where I think we give ourselves this like extreme pressure. It's like, nobody's putting that on you except for yourself. So don't worry about it. Sometimes he might not want to eat by himself. So you got to offer him some in a spoon and that's okay. And that's how we roll. We're just like happy baby, fed baby. If today he wants us to feed him, then so be it. And if tomorrow he wants to eat the damn thing himself, then so be it. And that's okay. Oh, I love that so much. I think there's so much richness in there. I feel like I kind of made that mistake of being like, yeah. I believed in it so much, but then it's like, okay, but then there's nothing wrong with being like, here, would you like that? And you're, you're handing your totally. kids and all the things. So yeah, like Nico likes to eat off of a fork, but sometimes he has a hard time getting it on the fork. So he'll oh, be yeah. holding the fork and I like stick it on. And then I help guide it or I'll just stick it in his mouth and he's happy with it too. It's just like, don't worry about it. They're going to be okay. None of them at 15 years old are going to be like, hey, you spoon fed me and I hate you for it. Like that's just oh, not going to happen. <laughs> it goes back to this idea of like, only you know, you know what's best for your family and like you're doing what actually works day to day. You can't, just like in business, you can't compare yourself to other people. It really is like doomsday when you do that. I'm glad you brought up business because for anyone that doesn't know, I mean, I feel like Ellen is known for this. But for anyone that doesn't know, Ellen has an amazing, badass company, Headley & Bennett. And you also wrote this book, Dream First, Details Later. And you're just such a badass businesswoman. And you take these big creative ideas and you actually do them. And I was wondering, you know, in talking about both, I think people at home really enjoy hearing about how people like call in that creativity, but also like make something out of it. How do you dream first and then have the details later? Oh, I feel like it's like my curse and my blessing. Mm. I just love 
making things happen in real life. And I love seeing it in my mind and then see it appear in front of me. And it gives me this like deeply profound joy Mm. that the only other thing I've experienced that is as joyful as this is like having my child. Like that is the, that it's just like such a joy I get. And I think that the way that I do it is by just deciding what is the thing I want to do. And then I force myself into that action very early on before I allow all the like, but what? Uh, huh, hoo, huh. So I'll give you an example. <laughs> I wanted to run a marathon. I had never run a marathon. I didn't know really what it meant to be a runner. And I got a great outfit at Nike and I signed myself up to the New York Marathon raffle. And they only accept X amount of people. Anyway, long story short, I got into the marathon. And so my best friend and I, who had also never run a marathon, we were like, okay, we're doing this. And it was just the simple action of going onto the website, signing up for that thing. And it pushed forward the decision that I had already made in my head. But if I hadn't gone on the website and signed up for the raffle thing, I wouldn't have gotten a chance to do the marathon. And so much of what we do in life is dependent on like a decision, first of all, right? Followed by action. And the action, it gets you on the road. It gets you on the path to wherever the hell you want to go. And I found I learned so much when I'm running down that road versus analyzing the road, deciding which road to go on, deciding what the weather is going to look like on the road. Like, who gives a shit? Mm. Just start walking on the road and you're going to learn a lot about what you want and what you don't want. And I did that with Headley and Bennett. My first apron order was literally my chef saying that somebody else was going to make him aprons. And I blurted out, I had an apron company before I even had a anything. And he gave me that order. And that's how this company that, you know, people look at now and think, wow, this is an amazing, you know, brand. Yeah. It started out as me blurting something out of my mouth saying, I have an apron company. So there's that decision that I mentioned followed by action because then I had to deliver to a customer who was also my chef. And now my job was on the line. So I, I like to put myself in situations where you can't back out of them oh. because it forces you to do the thing. And anytime I'm in that extreme discomfort, I grow. I grow, I grow, I grow oh. every time. And then I earn resilience and I earn grit and I earn confidence. And you don't earn confidence when you're like cozied up on the couch with a blanket and a cup of hot cocoa. Like you earn confidence when things are scary and like wild and you don't know where you're going to land. And then you land the plane somehow. And then Mm. boom, you got a notch of confidence on your belt. Oh, you know, I love that you're saying this because there's, I feel like two conversations. There's like the whole like rest and, you know, listen to your body and listen to yourself and and take, you know, rest or your body will decide when you're going to rest for you. But then there is this whole other conversation that I don't think they're mutually exclusive where there is this hustle factor. There is some fear and uncomfortable feelings when you are growing. And I think that that's really a valuable conversation too within kind of the whole wellness conversation. 100%. And by the way, I I think hustle now is a word that people, it triggers all kinds of things. I'm not totally sure why it does because I, I believe that becoming something in the world or making something out of yourself in the world is a very noble cause. And it includes a lot of hard work, but it's a noble pursuit nonetheless. I think along the way, you can let yourself go, but you can also not let yourself go and still have the ability to make shit happen. That is what I do. I, you know, I'm in Colorado right now. Over the mm-hmm. weekend, we came here with our family and we're, I'm working from here, but I'm also sleeping eight hours a day. And I'm also working my ass off during the week. Balance is tricky, but like it just you kind of merge the things you love to do in your life and you can make magic happen. You really are that person. And I feel like you have done a really good job through motherhood. You know, I always look at women because I had such, you know, my own journey with this of like, you're working, you have a kid. And then what does that toggle back look like of like, what is the bare minimum of what you need to kind of like take good care of yourself? And I feel like you've done a really good job dialing into that with what time you do have. And I feel like you've been really generous about that online. And I really appreciate that because you talk about how, you know, you have to make sacrifices in terms of like your time and how you're using your time, but you do tend to go back to those things that make you feel really grounded. 
thank you. It has been a very long, wild journey being a mother. I think it's the hardest thing I've ever done. It's the best thing I've ever done. But as fellow mothers, there's definitely a lot that we have to leave behind and that the guilt, like I know besides being Jewish, yes. I think it's also like buried in me. I'm just like, oh my God, if I'm not home by 530 for bedtime, I feel really bad about it. Oh, I, speaking of which, Mr. Nico is crying. Oh, um, no, no, no. Can you Did, give me a second? Yeah, to see, go, yeah. Go, 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 go. I'll yeah. be right back. Don't worry. Okay, sorry. Hi. Okay. Hi. All right. I'm back. Amazing. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Perfect. You know, I was going to cut this out. Wait, case in point, motherhood. Well, that's exactly my point. I was going to cut that out. And I actually realized that I wanted to keep it because so what just happened is Alan's son just started crying and she had to go run and get him really quickly. And the reason I don't want to cut it out is because that's real life. And that's oh, no. what happens. And it doesn't really matter what you're doing or what you're in the middle of. If you are a mom or a parent and yeah. your kid needs you, then like that's what you go and do. Yeah. And I think that that's really beautiful. And I think that, I don't know, you don't see that a ton. And I think it's really important to see someone like you who is running this ginormous company and doing all these other things. But like first things first, you are Nico's mom. Yeah. yeah. It definitely has reprioritized my efforts in my life, but that doesn't mean that it makes it easier. I really, I thought for any mother listening, it's like, I have such deeply profound respect for motherhood now. I all, I mean, I always have, but now I feel it in my bones. And I just think a mom is a full-time job first and foremost. So moms that are also working, you're basically like moonlighting with your job, but your number one job is being a mom. And when you leave you're still being a mom and you're scheduling things and you are making doctor's appointments. And my husband is an amazing husband, but like, he doesn't think about all that stuff. I think about that stuff. So there's this intrinsic set of responsibilities. That's just like bound to us, like glue and just like kudos to all of us for juggling it. Cause it's hard. It's so hard. Like I just had a little like mini meltdown while I was running down to get him. And I had to, give him his little sloth and walk him around the room and offer him something to eat. And it's just like the day doesn't stop, but your kids are like, Hey, you got to drop everything and come and be with me for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I think it's important to like have that conversation within this conversation, because that is like when you went to do that, I was like, yeah, go like, of course. And also like, huh, this is an opportunity to talk about that, especially with someone like you. So I was wondering with that, like, what is something that is making you feel grounded? Like, you know, you have both things and you're balancing them all. I'm sure as far as you're concerned, you feel like probably better sometimes than others. But what is something that you find is really grounding to you that you are doing for yourself? I am terrible at saying no to things. Mm. I, I pretty much say yes to most things, to be honest. And lately, I just recognize that I've been trying to jam like 40 pounds of you know what into a 10 pound bag. Yeah. I just, I can't do that. And that it's okay to say no. And that doesn't mean that I'm not capable. It doesn't mean that I'm less of a person because I didn't go to that one thing that I used to before I had a child. It just means I'm a different person now and there's an evolution, right? And so I feel like that's been a big shift. And giving myself a little bit of permission to not do everything I did before. And instead of being like, well, I did that before. Now I don't. It's more like, okay, Ellen, you're a new person post having a baby. You're not Ellen pre-baby trying to be Ellen pre-baby. You're Ellen post-baby just going into the future. And my husband is really good at helping me kind of like recalibrate when Mm -hmm. I'm feeling all out of like, oh my God, I'm so overwhelmed. And We'll, we'll literally do a weekly team family meeting on Sunday nights where we go over what do we have, what, what has to get done. If I'm overwhelmed, we'll make a hit list of like, here's all the things you have to do. Here's the things that you can deprioritize. And all of that combination of support is helping me survive and kind of do this. I also hired a president. Like great. I am not great. running the company on the day-to-day anymore. That's and great. 
that was a huge step for me because I've run that company for nine years and and now someone else is driving the bus, but I'm still sitting on the bus. And that was a decision so that I could be more present with Nico. So that's kind of some of the the combination of stuff that I've done to not lose my mind. That's amazing. And I think the thing is, and it comes back to this idea, and we've talked about this a bunch, but like being okay with the idea of potentially disappointing someone else so that you're not disappointing yourself. And obviously assuming that we're not being like terrible people and whatever. But I think if you're someone who's a people pleaser or someone who's so used to like getting everything done, yeah, being honest and being like, oh my God, but now I'm a mother now and I have this whole different set of priorities being like, no, unfortunately. And like, I'm so sorry if that does disappoint someone, but being like, okay, but now I actually can like get all these things done and have my mental health in order and like do all these things that I have to do at home, which I love. And I think is really beautiful thing to drive home. Yeah, I completely agree. And I'll I'll even say like recently I had a situation happen in our company where I used to be so involved with so much of the day to day and I did every job in the company before I hired somebody. Right. So like my love and connection to it is so profound. But I realized from feedback from my team that there were things where I wouldn't show up to a meeting on time because I was busy with Nico or something had happened or he was crying or whatever it was. And then they had a decision that they couldn't make because I wasn't on that call and it was Uh. holding them back from moving forward. And so I've had to recognize that along the way through some like hard feedback conversations where people are like, you either are in or you're out on that decision, but we can't wait for the train to keep going because you are like off whatever doing stuff. So I'm having to actively, as we speak, let go of things that are still really important to me Mm -hmm. because there's trade-offs every step of the way. And I'm not helping my team sometimes when I don't let go of certain things. And that's really, really hard as a founder, like really hard. Uh, I can imagine. And like, especially for you, because you're so detail oriented. And I do feel like there's a huge loss of ego in that way, in a good way for you. Like, I'm sure you had to just be like, okay, I guess for the good of the company, it makes sense to do this. But I think it takes so much heart and so much foresight to be able to push through and like see all of that. And, And the fact that you've hired all these amazing people that actually like see your vision and can fill in. I feel like in motherhood and with you, it's like dream first details later and delegate. 100%. Yeah. Like the dream first details later version of Ellen in 2012, when I started Heavenly Minutes, a very different version. Yes, now. of course. Now it's like, okay, you've got a lot of responsibility attached to the dream first that you do, but I put my energy towards things that I can create into the future. So for example, instead of worrying about the photo shoot, I'm now having to like let go of those things and let the team manage that. And my dream first are into, okay, kitchen land. What are the future things we're going to create in kitchen land? And this is what I love. And I don't know how we're going to get there, but we're going to get there. And I'm like planting the sort of stake in the sand on the moon saying like, this is where we're going. This is what we're doing. Now let's figure out how to get there. That is my own strength, not the like inner gizzards of the photo shoot. And is the lighting going to be just right? And I say this out loud and yet I still want to do the lighting, you know? So it's such a push and a pull and it's a painful challenge that I'm personally going through right now and being very open (laughs) Oh, thank you. Uh, but yeah, we all have it. Nothing is perfect. Okay. So nobody listening, please don't ever think you're trying to get to perfection because it's literally not real. And once I realized that I was like, okay, it can't be perfect. Just like be a better version of yourself every day. Ellen, I think you're so special. And I think that conversation is so important. And I think that this is going to be really important to so many people because that is real life and you are so inspiring and you're doing big things. And I think in letting these things go, I think you're going to be able to do so much more, but I know I can hear it. And I so appreciate you being so vulnerable because I can tell that it's not an easy thing. And I feel you on that. Thanks, mama. You're amazing. Thank you so much for being here. For anyone that doesn't know, I feel like everyone does, but like, where can we find you? Yes. You guys can find us on headleyandbennett.com. You know, we used to call ourselves an apron company. We're now a full-blown culinary brand. Yes. Literally knives, apron, the whole kit and caboodle. We're launching cutting boards, kitchen tools this year. Yes. And we have a collab coming out with Crocs, Disney, and Star Wars, which is so exciting That's and dope. so major. Yeah, all of those are happening this year. Um, so 
come join the bandwagon. And then you can find me on Instagram at Ellen Marie Bennett and Headley and Bennett. And you can see our magical little Nico and our pet pig Oliver and our one chicken olive oil. Really a kooky situation over here. It's a really good situation. Get involved if you're not already. <laughs> Get involved in the situation, will you? Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Love you. Love you. Thank you so much for listening to Good Instincts, hosted and written by me, Shira Barlow. You can find me on Instagram at Shira underscore RD. Good Instincts is a Dear Media Daily. Today's episode is brought to you by ButcherBox. With ButcherBox, we get premium meals that don't have to come at a premium price. And ButcherBox provides us with the best quality meat and seafood so you can whip up quality meals on your budget. I recently got my first box and I have to tell you, I'm obsessed. Chicken is my love language. So I got the poultry box. I usually make a ton of chicken thighs, but this came with chicken thighs. It also came with tenders and wings and a whole chicken. And so now I don't even have to decide what I'm making. I'm just going to kind of defrost as I go. And I think that that happens to a lot of people where we have so many recipes that we have access to and we end up not making any of them or any new things. And so I'm really excited to experiment more without the decision fatigue. There's just also so much peace of mind in knowing that it is incredibly high quality. This is 100% grass-fed beef, free-range organic chicken, and wild-caught seafood. They are humanely raised, no antibiotics or added hormones, and it's delivered right to your doorstep with free shipping always, and you can do curated and customized box plans. Get free chicken thighs for a year and $20 off your first box when you sign up today. That's three pounds of bone-in chicken thighs free in every box for a year, plus $20 off your first order when you sign up at butcherbox.com slash instinct and use the code INSTINCT. Claim this deal at butcherbox.com slash instinct and use the code INSTINCT today.